You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I am Michael Halcom and with me today is J.M. Smith. J.M., how's it? How's it, brother? How's the yurt? It's good. Uh, <laughs> man, it's it's warm in here right now. Cooking, yeah. cooking out there in the yurt. <laughs> I'm cooking a little bit, bro. The sun is beating in on me from that direction. and Yeah. Well, I got a nice I'm Carolina breeze on this end, so. Nice. Not hot here. Well, <laughs> yeah. When the yurt is buttoned up, dude, it traps heat like phenomenally. You yeah. Know? Um, you got an oven. And, uh, you got an oven there. You're in a crock yeah, pot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, well, this is an episode of 10 Questions where JM gets five, I get five when we look at a Bible verse. It's usually just a single verse. And, uh, I've said in earlier episodes, we do this to sort of model what it looks like to bring a creative uh, lens to the biblical text. Uh, Also to just show what it's like to encounter and engage scripture responsibly because we see scripture all the time out there in the wild, like one verse at a time. And uh, this is the kind of way we should be engaging it. At least we think so. Um, So we each get five questions. JM doesn't really know where we're going ever. And, uh, I hit use the random Bible verse generator, and uh, that's where we go. So in this episode, we're in Proverbs. That's what it gave me, J.M. Proverbs right. eighteen six. In our last Old Testament episode, we did Ecclesiastes, which um, was a little mind numbing and headache inducing, migraine inducing. Um, <laughs> Proverbs isn't much better sometimes. No. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna look at Proverbs here. Uh, Proverbs eighteen six to be particular, and um, yeah. So uh, if you're watching, you should be able to see that on the screen now. This looks like a short verse. We'll see if we can milk ten questions out of this. Squeeze okay. ten questions out of this. Um, we're in the Old Testament, so I gotta go first. Uh, I'm gonna read it though. Proverbs eighteen six says, "The lips of fools bring them strife, and their mouths invite a beating." <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, their mouths invite a beating. Wow. There we go. Um, okay. Well, um, my first You're... question is, is yeah, go ahead, very first. simple. Okay, yeah, my first question is very simple. It says, and their mouths invite a beating. Is the author of Proverbs sanctioning punching someone in the mouth? Or is it just the author saying, not necessarily that it's okay to punch them in the mouth, but just that if if punching is the right thing, um, but uh, that their mouths deserve it. Like they invite it, but you shouldn't necessarily do it. Because I could see some people, dude, uh, using this verse to be like, oh, so-and-so talk smack about me. Uh, Proverbs 18.6 yeah. says, his mouth invites a beating. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this prescriptive or descriptive? <laughs> there you go. Those are the, yeah. those are the good words. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my first question is... NIV translates uh, Reeve as strife, Um, but Reeve is a lawsuit, Uh, the word for like a covenant lawsuit, but Reeve. So, I mean, yeah, lips, lips of a fool, they bring on a lawsuit is literally that first line. So Hmm. is this talking about strife in general, like people not getting along, or is this talking about a legal, like, like slander to the point where there's, you got to take this before a judge. 
Um, and then I'm going to mm. save the next part of that for my next question because it piggybacks off of it. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. It's great insight. Uh, I'm going back to the mouths inviting a beating. You know, looking at this, literally, he uses the verb uh, kara. So I'm wondering if this could be translate translated um, like their mouths call out for like blows, you know. And, and so, in other words, it's not that their mouth calls like deserves to be punched, but they're using their mouth to, to incite, you know, a fight to call someone mm. to blows. Like there's a difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my second question. Mm -hmm. Well, then my next question is following up. If this is this talking again in general, is that second line uh, and his mouth for for beatings? It's plural. Um, for beatings, mm -hmm. he calls or it calls. Is the beatings? Is this again legal? corporal punishment like because one of the punishments in Ooh, is a beating nice. so is this a sentence like flogging is how the lexham english bible translates it um which would put it in the realm of a of a judicial context so is is the beatings is this talking about somebody punching you in the mouth because you gave them lip <laughs> or is this talking about you get being punished for inciting a lawsuit and losing it basically hmm that's great yeah you're kind of giving some good answers without actually giving answers well done <laughs> um very slick you are um <laughs> so the the fools here um so i'm just curious whether this is like uh by the way, this is a singular, right? The lips of a fool, mm -hmm. um, rather than plural. But is the does the author have somebody in mind? You know, I'm thinking like, is someone specific being invoked here? Like, is there is there a specific fool in mind, or is it just in general any old fool? Hmm. My my third question then, I'm looking at NIV on your on the screen, and it says the lips of fools, and it it translates fools as plural. I guess that's more to be general, but it, in Hebrew it is a fool. Lips lips is plural. Fool is singular. Yes. Bring is plural. So it's the lips are bringing. Um, but bringing them, them is, I don't see them anywhere in the Hebrew lips of a fool. They bring upon or on strife or on a lawsuit or on an argument, but the, the bring upon that. So is it, in other words, is it something that a fool is bringing on themselves, or is it saying the speech or the lips of a fool bring about strife for everybody not just for them but for the other right. person that they're oh. uh, giving lip to <laughs> so yeah that's my third hmm. question it's also fascinating to me that uh this is the this word for fool is the same u word used to mean constellation um I don't know. I'm just saying. I think that's interesting. You can see that uh, over here. You have Orion, um, then constellation. Well, that's that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, I don't know if I have a question about that. It doesn't seem like this is talking about a constellation. Lips of a constellation, they bring. Um, yeah. So let's see what else we can do here. Um, I, I guess with the proverb, I always want to 
I always want to ask, um, are we to understand this as a timeless truth a, or a timely truth or um, maybe not even a truth, just like a, something provocative, thought-provoking? So timeless truth, timely truth, thought-provoking. Hmm. Um, my next question is, fourth question is contextual. And so ver, the, the proverb right before this is about judgment, uh, not being yeah. partial, um, and righteous judgment, which then makes sense that Reeve would be the term yes. used in verse six. And then verse seven goes on to talk about, um, lips being to his ruin and a snare to his soul is the fool, the casil, which is the general word for fool. Uh, it, it's also in Ecclesiastes. It's used a lot. Is it, is this talking about a false, like a false witness is, is what the fool That's saying? Good. Is this in the context of bearing false witness? Because false witness, if you are found out, you get the punishment that you, we're testifying against with your false witness. So is this whole section dealing with that or are these, were these originally separate proverbs that just kind of are linked together by this key, this, this concept of speech or words of a fool. I love that. I, I kind of wish it was still like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, oh man. That's yeah. one law change. I'd love to see made is, you yeah. get the punishment if you witness against somebody and they're found out to be false. Yep. 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 Was that fifth or fourth? Where were we at? That was my fourth. I think you're on to something with, uh, with all the uh, legal stuff here. Um, mm. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, let's see. The lips of fools, uh, the lips of a fool brings him strife. And the mouth fights, call for a beating, call for blows. Um, yeah, if, if this isn't a sort of juridical or forensic, perhaps, context, um, and it is meant to be read not as a standalone proverb, uh, but as one proverb, you know, as a part of many others, um, then, yeah, how are we to understand it, A, and then B, um, are we to meant to read proverbs in succession um, and, like, link to one another? Or are they meant to be read in isolation? Hmm. Uh, my my last question is: Is this supposed to be funny? Is is this a humorous <laughs> proverb? Because mouth and lips call out normally, but they don't call out for beatings. And and so like like to use your mouth to yaka to call, that's a normal thing. Yes. So is it is it like, yeah, your mouth calls out for something, all right, for a beating, you know? Like is it is yeah, this yeah, proverb yeah. somewhat not tongue in cheek because it's it's serious, but is it is this a playful? Is this a playful? Um, right. Like when we say, oh, you're cruising for a bruising or something, you know, like just this figure yeah, of speech right. that's that's playful but also giving a little bit of a warning is this originally is this an example of like an ancient hebrew version of that kind of thing because it, it that's good it flows in hebrew like it it i mean my hebrew pronunciation is not good but uh and then the next part um yeah uh yeah upiao like does it is it like a yeah i don't even try to pronounce the next line because it's not that good enough but is it 
is this a almost like a slogan or a taunt not a taunt but something like that yeah should well, we be smiling of, when uh, we read this <laughs> i love that so we'll add that to the we had timeless truth timely truth thought provoker humor um, oh, yeah yeah I, I think that's a really great question cruising for bruising is an excellent analogy too <laughs> yeah so um well i think that's it i think we both got five in i'm i'm actually impressed that we were able to get 10 questions out of that that <laughs> tiny verse um and in a rather enigmatic verse at least seemingly enigmatic verse um in isolation but i'm I think just you, waiting for your when you're when your Bible generator pulls up, Jesus wept. What are we going to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is Jesus? Uh, what genre is this? Yeah, we're going to be reaching at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, one of these days, one of these days. Um, um, but, you know, Jesus wept is the shortest verse in English. I don't know if you knew this or not, but it's not the shortest in Greek. To tell us that, that's right. Is it? Is it to tell us that? Um, or is that part of a that verse? A, that a verse? I don't know. Um, I'm deferring to you on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't remember that. Is that? Um. Yeah, I. I don't know. I forget. I. I. Yeah. But I do know. Uh. Is it first? First Thessalonians uh, five sixteen. I want to look real quick now that I said that. Just real quick. <laughs> Give me a second. Here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up. Bring up First more Thess questions. Let's let's <laughs> just see. Yeah, there you go. First <laughs> First Thessalonians five. Let me turn on the Greek here. I could be totally wrong about this, but I am certain. You know, Jesus wept is two words in Greek. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, what was I thinking? Um, was it further down? I was thinking 5-6. Let's see if it's 5-16. Oh, there it is. Um, oh, yeah. Pandote herete. And you notice 5-16 and 17. Or am I showing it on the screen? Oh. Yeah, it's five sixteen. First Thessalonians five sixteen, and then also seventeen has only two words. But I think in letter count, um, five five sixteen is the shortest verse. Pandote mm. herete. All rejoice always. And by yeah. the way, even in English, that's still just two words. Jesus wept. I guess would be what nine letters. Um, <laughs> whereas this is uh, uh 11 so uh, it's I don't like know. the the debate between the nile river and the amazon which is the longer one and there's depending on how you count it so yeah that's what that reminds me of. um <laughs> anyways that's the shortest i'm pretty sure that's the shortest greek verse in the whole new testament mm. I, would, I did not know that that's good to know yeah, that's some nice Bible trivia right there, bro. When there you, you go. You want to drop some knowledge on people. And you, you always have that guy who, you know, is talking about the shortest verse in the Bible like they know. And then you can <laughs> you wait go. for them. Wait uh, for uh, them. Uh, you yeah. give them the Dikembe finger <laughs> wag. Uh, uh, uh. That's right. That's all right. Yep. Uh, all right, friends. Uh, hey, once you're done watching and listening here, Head over to DiscipleDojo.org and the Disciple Dojo YouTube page. Get all kinds of free stuff, great content, um, great guests on there that JM's talking about, good reviews. And uh, head over to GlossHouse.com, GlossHouse TV on the YouTube channel, and uh, the Proof Text podcast on Spotify, iTunes, and all that. So, all right, we're going to wrap up there, stop there, and say we hope. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. 
Head to glosahouse.com today. Glosa House, language resources for the global community.